Hi there, my name is Roger Pillema and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. In a number of previous talks, I've tried to emphasize the importance of sensory testing. For example, in testing for radiculopathy, in testing for axillary nerve damage, in testing for supraclavicular nerve damage, in distinguishing between high and low median nerve lesions, etc. In my opinion, careful, considered and intentional sensory testing is one of the most useful clinical signs available to us. It is also, in my opinion, greatly underutilised. Not only does sensory testing need to be careful and considered, but it also needs to be intentional, and I'm going to demonstrate this in the following video. As I've stressed previously, and so importantly, if you don't think of it, you will not look for it. If you do not look for it, you will never find it. And this applies particularly to sensory testing. The case I'm going to show you demonstrates a number of important issues. How often do you see a patient who is complaining of symptoms in an upper or a lower limb, and on sensory testing, complains of diffuse hyposthesia to sensory testing of that limb or the affected part of that limb. I'm sure you will agree that this is a common finding. It is usually found in patients whose home language is not English or who are intellectually challenged, but this is not always the case. As noted in previous talks on testing veracity, the tendency either consciously or subconsciously is to give the patient a cross in the negative column. The video I'm going to show you is very instructive. Firstly, showing how one needs to look beneath the obvious and also to emphasize the importance of knowing what one is looking for and the effort required to find what one is looking for. This is a lady who has an S1 nerve root lesion on the right side and who demonstrates a depressed ankle reflex on the side, weak eversion of the foot and muscle wasting of the calf. On sensory testing then, we are entitled to expect to find sensory loss in the S1 distribution, that is, on the lateral border and sole of the foot. Please note how the lady has normal sensation of her left leg and how initially she shows stocking hyposthesia of her right leg and the time and effort needed to eventually be able to clearly map out her dermatomal sensory deficit. It is only when one compares the sensation on the medial side of the right foot to the sensation on the lateral side of the foot that she acknowledges a difference in sensation on the right side. And then the further effort needed to map out the S1 dermatome. Then this one up there, up you go. Okay, now I just want you on this side, pull your foot up Antonia, hard as you can, pull, 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 good girl. Turn in, push, 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 turn out. That way Antonia, push, push, good girl. This one, turn in, push, 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 hard as you can. Turn out that way, push, 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 not so strong. Okay, just let me measure this now. Just try this one. Down you go. 32, this side, down you go, 30. This is the sore leg, the right one. Yeah. Okay, now, checking the feeling in the leg, okay? Feel this side. Okay. Here? Yeah. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. This side? Not much. Not much. Here? Not much there. This one? Not much there. Here? Not much. Here? No. Is there any difference? This one? This one? This one, more or less. More or less. This one? That's good. This one? Less. More or less. Okay. Is there any difference? This one? This one? This one more better. More this, this one more better? And Tanya, tell me when it changes from more better to less. Okay. All right? Tell me when it changes. Their changes. Yeah. Tell me when it comes back sharp. Sharp here? Yeah? yeah. Tell me when it changes, Antonia. You feel this? Yeah. Tell me when it changes. 
You feel this? A little bit. And Tanya, tell me when it changes from sharp to not sharp. Okay. Yeah? You feel? Yeah. yeah. Tell me when it changes. Yeah. Tell me when it comes back sharp again. There, sharp. There. Difference, eh? Yeah. Okay. This then is a lady in whom we know what we can expect to find on sensory testing and we know where to look for it. Assume for the moment that there was no reflex change, no muscle wasting, no muscle weakness and that all there was was hyposthesia on the lateral border and sole of the right foot as evidence of an S1 nerve root lesion. What are the chances that this would be picked up with the usual methods of sensory testing? Once again, I cannot emphasize strongly enough the importance of sensory testing. It needs to be careful and considered, carried out patiently, checking and rechecking. The patient needs to understand what you are doing and needs time to consider their response. It cannot be rushed. I will have more to say on sensory testing in a future talk. Once again, thank you for your attention and I hope that you will join me for the next presentation. Until then, Salani Gashli. <laughs>